Hi there, welcome to Joyce on YouTube. Don't forget to join us on the Joyce Meyer app and at JoyceMeyer.org for more of what you're about to see and lots of great content to help you in your everyday life. Thanks so much for joining us. And I think you know me well enough by now to know that I don't bother teaching anything that I don't really believe and that I don't intend to practice and that I don't really believe is going to be life-changing. And this is a very small adjustment that can make a very big change in our lives. We don't take enough time to celebrate. Today, you hear people say, eh, what are you going to do for your birthday? Ah, nothing. I'm just another year older. That's no big deal. Can I ask you a question? If we throw a gigantic party for a one-year-old, I mean, we go all out. Everybody gets invited. The kid gets to stick his face in the whole cake. I mean, it's just, oh, we got to celebrate. He's a year old. Well, you know, what about by the time you get to 70? Shouldn't that be like a bigger celebration then? But by then, we think, oh, I don't need to do that. I'm just another year older. Yeah, you're another year older. You've survived another year. You're still here. And that's something to celebrate. I don't, I don't mess around with a day anymore. I'm just doing it for a whole week. When I got about 65, I thought, we're going to have a long celebration. And I want gifts from everybody. <laughs> Dave's like, well, if I go out and buy you gifts, you just take them back. I don't care. I want to know that you got out there and walked around and found them. How many of you ladies get that? Right. The word celebrate means to mark an important event in your life. Something that caused you pleasure. Something that gave you pleasure. That's why we celebrate wedding anniversaries and birthdays and things like that. Celebrating can be anything from a huge party and a feast, taking time to do something you enjoy, giving special thanks to God for victory. One of the ways that we can celebrate, and you'll see this somewhere in the teaching tonight or tomorrow is, and actually this is biblical, you can celebrate by doing something for somebody else. A lot of times, especially in the Old Testament, when they had great breakthroughs, one of the things that God commanded them to do was share with the poor. When we really appreciate what God has done in our life, one of the things we should want to do, we don't always want to, but we should want to go do something for somebody else that doesn't have what we have, that doesn't know what we know. David said when he was facing Goliath and nobody was encouraging him. Matter of fact, everybody was telling him, you can't do it. You're too little. You're not, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not. How many of you have noticed that people like to tell you what you're not? And it's just the enemy using them. He's just, it's amazing to me some of the dumb stuff that people can say. It's like, why did you say that to me? I, I don't need your, I don't need your discouragement. I don't need you to tell me what's wrong with me today. Can you just tell me something good? The devil tells me enough about what's wrong with me. I need other people to cheer me up. Amen? And a lot of times people want to give you your, their opinion about stuff. It's like, why do you even need to have an opinion? Nobody asked you for your opinion. I don't want your opinion. <laughs> you know. Amen? And so, but David said that, now listen, he encouraged himself in the Lord. He's facing Goliath, and he said, I remember the lion that I killed, and I remember the bear that I killed, and this Goliath, this giant, will be no different because God is on my side. So what I did when I would be hurting and I had to go to work and had to do something is, and you know, really, when you're like that, you, know, you want somebody to understand, but you know they don't. I mean, you know, really down deep, they just don't. And you can't blame them. They just don't. And so kind of when you're going through something really tough, 
How many of you feel like you're just kind of alone? It's just like you want somebody to get it, but you know they really don't. They do the best they can, but they really don't get it. So you kind of feel alone. And one of the things that I would do is I would remember other things that God has done for me. Something I have to celebrate is that 27 years ago, I had breast cancer and I had to have a breast removed. But for the last 27 years, every year when I go get a mammogram, I get back a report that says, totally fine. That's worth celebrating, amen? Now, so now I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you something that's a good piece of wisdom for you. This is one of those old things that can be life-changing. When I'm telling you, well, I've been married 50 years and all my kids are saved and all my grandkids are saved, you might be thinking, well, mine aren't. Or when I tell you, you know, my back is healed now, you might be thinking, well, mine still hurts and it's been hurting 30 years. Okay, now listen to what I'm gonna say. Many times until we can learn to be happy for other people who have what we want, we're never gonna get it. Come on now. If we're jealous of other people's victories and we get an attitude, well, must be nice for you, you know. I'm telling you what, even if you don't mean it, tell God, I want to be happy for them. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but I refuse to be jealous and unhappy for them. I want to be happy for them. Get honest with God. Don't play games with God. If you tell him, I'm doing the best I can, I don't want to feel like this, but I do, help me. God will help you change in that area. I'm going to say it again. If there's something that you really want or need in your life, I can pretty much promise you, <laughs> it's kind of like a test. God will run somebody in front of you that's got what you want. <laughs> the Israelites were commanded to celebrate. And if you can be patient here and listen to me for a few minutes, I think that you're gonna learn something. There were seven feasts that the Israelites were commanded to keep every year. Every year. <laughs> and every one of the feasts was a time to remember something that God had done for them. So let me tell you, there must be power in remembering and there must be power in celebrating or God would not have told them that they had to do it. And here's the thing that I think. I think the things they had to do by law, we can just live in now. It doesn't have to be like a, oh boy, we're having this celebration, that celebration. We can live with that attitude of always celebrating what God is doing in our lives. The first one was Passover. And that's a big, big, big holiday for anybody that was or is still Jewish. Seven feasts were commanded by God. The first one was Passover, and that celebrated the night in Egypt when all the firstborn were killed, but God caused the angel of death to pass over the Israelite homes because they put the blood of a lamb on the lintel and the doorposts of their house. Well, my, my, my. Wonder what happens to us now when we trust in the blood of Jesus to protect us from things that want to come, come around and destroy us. Come on, if they could celebrate for seven days, we ought to live in celebration because we've got the blood of Christ over our lives. Okay, I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do here in the next few minutes because it's going to be a little bit of a turn and something that we're maybe not always so used to. Instead of talking to you about your circumstances and the breakthrough you need and your kid needs to be saved, you need to get a promotion at work, you need to have your back healed, I'm not going to talk about any of that for a few minutes. I'm going to talk to you about what God has done for us spiritually. We focus way too much on the outside stuff 
and not nearly enough about what God has done for us inside. Look at me. You are a person that is born again. You have the nature of God living in you. You've got a new heart. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. Your sins are forgiven. God's protection is over your life. You have the privilege of praying. Ah. You have the, priv the privilege of praying, and God always listens, and He cares, and He answers our prayers. And how do you like this one? You're never alone. Never, ever, ever, ever alone. I invite you to join me in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org. Today, for more on this topic and other teachings, I believe God will use these to help you in your everyday life. I'll look forward to seeing you there.